Mount Nebo. I say good morning, Mount Nebo. Happy Mother's Day to all those who are here. And happy Mother's Day to all those who are in virtual land. It is 9 o'clock. It is now time to start services. Ushers, can you man the doors? I was glad when I said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Again, it is 9 o'clock. It is now time to start services. The call to worship, coming from Psalms 111, verses 1 and 2. In the ministry, justly. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Amen and amen. Dear God, it's me here again, standing in the need of prayer. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for waking us up this day. Thank you for starting us along our way. It is raining outside, but it is warm in our hearts. We thank you for those who are here and those who are on the way. I invoke our prayers upon this gathering. I pray for the one who is preaching the word. Touch him, speak to him, and guide him. This I pray in my name of Jesus. In the church, said amen. amen. Now I put the service in the hands of the deacons. Let me just say good morning to you again. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house and all over the world. I, I remember a few years ago, Minister Tipley used to sing, if I could just hear my mother pray again. We miss him in that area. He used to sing that. All right, we are going to get going. Um, I will read the scripture. It's coming from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 2. And Deacon French will bring us a song and a prayer. If you are able to stand. The gospel of St. Luke, first 10 verses. And it reads thusly. And the third day, there was a, wed a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to, to the marriage. Mm -hmm. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother says unto the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three frickensins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. And when he said unto them, draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they buried it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, which was made wine, and knew not what it was, but the servants which knew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto them, every man at the beginning do it set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now amen, amen.
again. Good morning. Good morning. Our song this morning will be What a Fellow uh, Leaning on the uh, Everlasting Arm. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. <laughs> Father, Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving. Creator of mankind, creator of the world. Father, we just thank you once again because you've been a good God, you've been a great God. Father, this morning we want to thank you for salvation. Father God, again, we look at this as May of 2022. Father, half of the year is almost gone. But Father, we just thank you for bringing us this far. Father, again, we just thank you. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy this morning, Father God. We thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us this morning. We thank you for love kindness this morning. We thank you for peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for happiness, Father. Father, you've been again a great God. You've been a good God. You've been moved many mountains within our lives, Father God. And Father, this, you know the situation within Iraq. Father God, we just ask a special prayer for the families that lost their loved ones. And Father God, we ask that you touch the sick and shut in this morning, Father God. And Father God, we just ask that you touch our glory heads this morning in the church. And Father God, again, there's someone out there this morning that's not feeling uh, up to par. You know who that individual is. We ask that you touch that individual and that that individual leave out this building better than they came in. And then, Father, again, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, because he rose on that third day, that third day with all power. In the marvelous master's name of Jesus Christ, we say amen. Amen. Good morning, Mount Nebo. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to rise to our feet for our praise and worship period. 
Psalms 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. For whom shall I fear? How many are trusting in the Lord this morning? Come on, I need to hear you. How many are trusting in the everlasting God this morning? The God of all creation. Oh, yeah. Top right here. Mm, the Lord, my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord, my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be?
talking about the God that we experience to be the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of our creation, the everlasting God. Oh, who shall we fear? Because we set our hope on him. We set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We set our hope. We set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love.
righteous God, our Jehovah, you may be seated in the presence of God. now prepare our hearts for our purpose and mission statement. On the count of three, we shall recite together one, two, and three. The purpose of the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church is to bring men, women, children to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to develop them into the likeness of Christ, to train them in the biblical principles of worship, prayer, and Bible study, to encourage one another by engaging in fellowship, practicing stewardship, and rendering service, to glorify God and edify the body, dream it, dare it, define it, and do it. It is now time for opportunities of the week, dates to remember. Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church announcements and dates to remember for the week May 8, 2022. The Mount Nebo Baptist Church family wishes all mothers a healthy and happy Mother's Day. Please join us for our Wednesday night midweek prayer service and church school. Don't forget to remember our social distancing, wearing masks, and sanitizing of your hands. Pastors, Helpers, Anniversary Ministry Meeting with Deacon Scott Street will be Thursday, May 12th at 6 p.m. Mount Nebo's Womanhood Celebration, Saturday, May 28th. The theme is Growing in God's Garden of Grace, Solomon's second chapter, verse one. The speaker for this event will be Sister Lorraine Jackson. Clothing Drive, the Women's Clothing Ministry, Men's Evangelism, and Culinary Ministry will be hosting a Clothing Drive June 18th. Please donate lightly used items that are clean and in good condition for those who are in need. The last day for Clothing Drop-Off will be Saturday, June 11th. Your participation is greatly appreciated. Questions? Please see Sister Arby, Sister Rigg, or Sister Sturdivant. City of Omaha Housing Affordable Action Plan. The City of Omaha and RDG Planning and Design will host a series of open house meetings to engage the local community in identifying strategies that address Omaha's needs for quality affordable housing. Omaha meetings will occur on the following dates, May 9th, May 11th, and May 17th. For additional information, see the church Facebook page, bulletin board flyer, or email Omaha Planning at cityofomaha.org. Graduating high school seniors who are members of Mount Nebo, Please contact the church office if you are interested in applying for the Mount Nebo Memorial Scholarship. Please send information to the church office, office at mountneboomaha.org. Please submit your name, address, home, cell phone number, school, and date of graduation. You will receive instructions for completing and submitting an application. Applications will be available on May 1st and are due by June 6th, 2022.
Baptist Pastors Wives Council of Nebraska for the school year ending 2022. Applications are now available. Completed applications are due June 8, 2022. If you are interested, please contact the office at mountnebomaha.org. Seniors, please be mindful of the deadline dates for each scholarship opportunity. Follow Mount Nebo on social media. Stay up to date with everything happening in our church by liking us on Facebook, following us on Instagram and Twitter, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Let us please pray for our sick and shut-in and bereaved families here with the Mount Nebo Church family and throughout our city. Happy birthday to all of our Mount Nebo family members. These are your announcements, and have a blessed week. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much to our media ministry and our virtual vision ministry. Those PowerPoint presentations grow more beautiful every week. Amen and amen. It is now time for recognition of our visitors, giving honor to God, to Pastor Arby and family, all of our ministers with us today, and to you, the Mount Nebo Church family. Those who are visiting with us today, if you would be so kind as to stand and share with us your name and your church home, and remain standing until the welcome has been received. Amen, amen, amen. wonderful, wonderful. We will start with the young lady here. Pastor Terry L. Arvey and the Mount Nebo Church family, thank you so very much for choosing to worship with us today. Those who stood and to those we may have visiting that chose not to stand. To family members of Mount Nebo who have been away for a while and you're here visiting with us today and worshiping with us today, thank you so much. Here at the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church, you are a visitor once and a friend forever. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us today here at the Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church, the church where fellowship is real. And I'll turn you back into the hands of the pulpit. Amen. Thank you, Sister Cannon. Let me put a little bit more context on, remain standing if you would, just to put a little bit more context on Sister Trina, Trino Hill. Um, last week she called um, and she wanted to attend worship and she shared some things with me and I because of that, it might be a little wiser to wait another week. Amen. I'm not going to tell y'all what she shared with me. If she want to share it with y'all, she can share it with y'all. But um, she's here today, and we want to show her some love. Y'all say amen for her. <laughs> then to Horton's, Alex Horton's mother-in-law, Sister Horton's mother, Prince of Peace, y'all give her a big amen. Come on. Amen. And then certainly to all of the mothers all over the sanctuary. Um, when I woke up this morning and I got the weather report and it said that it was raining, I said, well, now we may have.
have a little, um, little, little, um, little, little something going on. But when I walked in and saw Taylor, I said, everything is all right, Joe. <laughs> Good to see you, Taylor. All the mothers, happy Mother's Day to you. To my mother and my mother-in-law and late Charles, happy Mother's Day to you all. To um, our daughter in California, Jennifer, wherever she's at, all of them on Mother's Day. And, and Taylor, um, happy Mother's Day. I remember when all of them, I vividly remember when all of them were born. Um, and now um, those three have children of their own. I told Abigail she got to wait till I'm about 95 to have a child. And then I'll be all right with that. Amen. Come on, let's stand. I want us to greet our visitors first. Y'all share love with them. We welcome you. Everybody. Come on, we welcome you. Come on, wave. My wife, happy Mother's Day. We welcome you. Yeah. We welcome you. Where fellowship is free. Come on and do it. We welcome you. Take a seat. We welcome you. Stop your feet. We welcome you. Where fellowship is free. Y'all don't mind one more time. We welcome you. and then we're going to have a special presentation um, brought to us by Deacon Alex Horton as it relates to something that's tremendously important on May 10th. If you're going to, um, if you're not going to vote, then you don't have a right to complain. And you ought to vote at its very core because somebody that looks like you went through some tremendous, terrible things that I could not bear so I can vote. And so it doesn't matter what election comes up, I try to cast a vote. Um, in every election I cast a vote, and you can vote, you could have vote by mail, but if you didn't vote by mail, make sure you get out and go vote, amen? amen. Let me run through this really quick um, we're praying for certain ones, you know who we normally um, say, but let me add a few that we, we, that we don't normally say, we didn't know to say, now we know to say. Um, Sister Kim Black has a son, Kevin Black, had emergency surgery over in Michigan on May 5th, and she's requesting our prayer, church prayer. Brother Lindsay had um, surgery and was on the men recovering at one of his niece's house. We want to pray for him. Sister Evangeline, Sister Evangeline uh, Evangelist Davidson is back home now, and we want to pray for her. And then yet earlier this morning, Sister Bobby Payne left a message for us, and um, her sister passed um, in Omaha on earlier this morning, uh, Valene Robinson, and we want to pray for Sister Bobby Payne and family. Amen. Amen. Then we want to um, say this, and then we're going to move out of the way for this pres special presentation. Um, Deacon R.J., stand up, but Deacon. Everybody know you. That's the Deacon. That's the de Deacon General Giant. Amen. His daughter um, uh, and Sister Beverly's, their daughter, I don't, uh, is Sister Beverly here? Not here today. Um, but he and Sister Beverly's daughter um, got 
mastered on May 22nd. Will be mastered on May 22nd in counseling psychology. Boy, that's all right. Counseling psychology. And you know what, bro, RJ? There's some psychology when you're doing some counseling. Uh, so we want to pray for her, and God will bring her wherever her education can take her and even beyond where her education can take her. And then my daughter, I almost forgot about this. Uh, she's going to, I don't know when she's going to be returning in the service sometime in June, I think, um, with, with little Leia, Layla. Um, Taylor um, is now mastered. She walked on yesterday and got her degree. She's now mastered in curriculum and instruction. Amen. And so thank God for that. And then again, to all of the mothers, just want to say happy Mother's Day. And you know, you don't want to make a promise to a mama and break it. Amen. So might I try to make a promise to your mothers today? Somebody say, oh boy. <laughs> might I try to make a promise to mothers today? I'm going to hold you alone but it ain't going to be long. Amen. Y'all didn't get that, but y'all going to see it later on. Come on, Brother Alex. He's going to make this presentation. Give us about 10 minutes. I think voting is more than important than 10 minutes, but it's sure enough important for at least 10 minutes to get out via live stream. Amen. To all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Again, happy Mother's Day for all those that are here. This is my first Mother's Day without my mother. So um, it's, it's, but we're pressing on, we're pressing on. But I wanted to come talk to you all today about something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, and I, I first must give appreciation to Deacon Sherwood Ellis because he's the one who put this fire in my heart and that is to serve civically. Um, Voting is very important. If you have not been watching the news, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the primary for Douglas County, as Pastor has said, is this Tuesday. I will be working in the commission on this Tuesday. So if you call, you might get me. Uh, if you did not register to vote by last Monday, you cannot vote on Tuesday. 40% of voters in Douglas County had their polling places change, 40%. Now, I'll leave that up to you to determine what 40% is going to change for. The Secretary of State's office this year, they are predicting about a 35% turnout in voting. But in 2018, in the last local election, only 24% of voters in the state of Nebraska showed up to vote, 24%, not even a quarter. So you might be thinking, eh, it's no big deal. I gotta, we can vote in November. We can vote in November, no big deal. Well, let me tell you a, little, a few things here. First, redistricting, also known as gerrymandering at times, happened in September 2021 due to the state legislature. They redrew the districts in the entire state of Nebraska. There were 35 yeas and 11 nays with one vacancy. There's 31 Republicans that voted to redraw the districts. There were 17 Democrats that voted to redraw, that voted no to redraw those districts. That meant that five Democrats voted like the Republicans did. And of course there was a vacancy. So District 2, which is where we are, uh, it grew uh, because of the redistricting, but it grew in the west part of the district. What does that mean? That means that there are more people that don't look like us that are making decisions for people that look like us. Redistricting changed more than just polling places and who represents you. It had changed everybody. And, and you, you may not know this, but it also changed your children's right to get affordable education and where they're going to go to school. Uh, back in December, I think of this past year, my wife and I, we got a letter in the mail that said that Rihanna, she's a student up at Burke High School, and she's bused at Burke High School. She's been bused for two years in a row. She was no longer going to be able to be bused at Burke High School. That's because of the redistricting. 
They changed her homeschool to the new high school that's being built on 156th and Ida. So we're thinking, okay, no big deal. But she can't go to that school because they're only accepting ninth and 10th graders. That changed because of the redistricting that was decided down in Lincoln and signed into law by the governor. That changed. So your voting affects more than just ticking a dot on a ballot somewhere. It affects your everyday life. It affects how you pay taxes, what taxes you pay. It affects what polling place you go to. It affects your kid's right to, get a, to, to go vote. And it, it affects your kid's right to get on the bus. So you're thinking, okay, that's no big deal. I can take my kid to school. But what about the single mother or the single father who has to be at work at 8 o'clock, whose child goes to school with Rihanna at Burke High School, and they have to be there at 745, but they live and they work in Council Bluffs. What about them? How are they going to manage this? So why is it important to vote? It's important to vote because your local elections shape the national election. States run elections, not the federal government. The state that you live in runs the, runs the election in your area. We vote for the persons who sit on our utilities council, on our city council, on our school board. That's all responsibility. Your rep in Washington that goes to Washington, D.C. to raise or lower your taxes, you vote for that person. You even vote for sheriff. Now, a few weeks ago, uh, Brother Wayne Hudson came and spoke to us and said why he would get the job. We didn't hear from the other candidate, but the other candidate did get pulled over the other day doing 107 in a 65. So why would I vote for somebody that can't follow the simple laws? The minority party right now is controlling the decisions for everybody. The majority party seems to refuse to fight for the folks that put them in office. Voting is the one single way to hold your elected officials accountable. It's our job to say you're hired or you're fired. That's our job. That's our responsibility. So as Pastor said, you know, a lot of people have fought and bled and died for this right. You know, the, the, the 15th Amendment that gave us the right to vote was ratified in 1870. Why, a little less than 100 years later, were we still marching and getting dogs sicked and fire hoses turned on us and getting beaten, bricks hit over the head to exercise a right that we'd had for 100 years already? And we're still trying to fight for that right. We're still trying to protect that right, still to this day. So states, let me, let, me, let me say this, and then I'll go to my seat. So I looked at this. I had this discussion with some of my coworkers, and we're talking about the recent uh, Supreme Court opinion that's getting ready to come to light about Roe versus Wade. And I'm not going to go into the, the, uh, the one side or the other of Roe versus Wade, because that's not my place. That's your decision to make. But I will say this. The decision doesn't take the right to choose it gives it back to the states. So that means your governor, your local officials are gonna decide a woman's right to choose what to do and how to uh, decide what she wants to do with her health. This is a trigger law state. Nebraska was a trigger law state. That meant that if Roe versus Wade was overturned, that immediately a bunch of laws would have outlawed a bunch of things in this state when it was overturned. And there's 13 other trigger states right now that you see on the news. More than a, a, a dozen conservative states have passed similar measures, but because of some elected officials here in this district fighting on our behalf and your behalf, that did not pass. But it's on the ballot again in November. Other laws in this country will soon be under attack. Your right to vote is already under attack. Your right to choose who you want to be married to is already under attack. Your right to be just black in America has already, has never not been under attack. 
so I kind of went this way with my coworkers because we were they were a lot of people in an uproar and and a lot of people were bothered by this and so I said let's look at how voting affects a long term process. So I looked at the just the justice Samuel Alito, uh, who wrote this majority opinion that's making all this hubbub right now. And I said, how did he become a Supreme Court justice? Well. Justice Alito was born in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, he's a graduate of Princeton University. In 1985, he belonged to a group called Concerned Alumni of Princeton, which was a group of, of alumni that tried to keep women from being members of Princeton University. He argued 12 cases before the Supreme Court. One of those cases was Thornburg uh, versus American College of OBGYNs. It was a challenge to a Pennsylvania law that was found unconstitutional that required women to be told that abortion might have detrimental physical and psychological effects on mothers. It, it basically was a law to try to shame ladies into not getting abortions if they needed to. It took nothing into consideration about sexual assault, about unwed mothers, none of that. It just said you can't do it. 1982, and he argued against that law and the Supreme Court found it unconstitutional because of Roe versus Wade at the time. He's a member of the Federalist Society. I'll let you look that one up. He was nominated to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals by President George W. Bush. He was recommended to that court by a former federal judge named Marianne Trump Berry. Yes, the sister of the 45th President of the United States. As a Third Circuit Court judge, he overturned part of Planned Parenthood versus Casey which is a law that helped strengthen the 1982 law in Pennsylvania, but it also put more stringent stuff on that law about parental consent, informed consent, and it made them wait for 24 hours before they could even try to even attempt to get an abortion. He wrote a dissenting opinion in a case called Doe versus Grudy, where, and this one tripped me out, where a, a drug task force in the state of Pennsylvania suspected a husband and father of selling methamphetamines. They got a warrant to search the house. The mother and the daughter were not suspects. They asked a, a female parking enforcement officer, a person who writes parking tickets, to come search the wife and the daughter. That is illegal. It's illegal. And he wrote a dissenting opinion on it, saying it should be legal. He was nominated by the President Bush to the US Supreme Court, again, recommended by Marianne Trump Barry. There's this theme there, y'all. Uh, he refused, in his confirmation, to state whether he would overturn Roe versus Wade. He was elevated to the Supreme Court, and as a justice, he wrote a dissenting opinion in Bostick versus Clayton County, where three different employers fired longtime employees for just saying that they were part of the LGBTQ community just saying they were part of the community. And of course, he wrote this opinion uh, that's out here right now. Maya Angelou once said that when a person shows you who they are, believe them the first time. We saw this coming, and we did nothing about it. We didn't do a thing about it. That falls on us. That falls on us as voters. That's our responsibility. By the way, uh, Maya Angelou's book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, it's a banned book. It's banned, along with To Kill a Mockingbird, Of Mice and Men, I know, right? Of Mice and Men, The Handmaid's Tale, and yes, The Holy Bible is a banned book in, in schools and in other places in this country. We are the ones that are in charge in this country, not the hired and elected politicians. It is our job to hold them accountable. That's our job. And there's nothing wrong with talking to them face to face if you need to. I've, you know, uh, Dr. Logan and I, we've had our differences, but I'll give it to her. She and I have sat down and we've had discussions and she's taken accountability for things and I praise her when she does things right and I hold her accountable when she does things wrong. That's my responsibility. That's our responsibility. We are the ones in charge. People have, like Pastor said, people have fought, bled, died for this right. 
Don't waste that right. Go and vote. It's the easiest thing to do. They make it so easy. You can get up, you can get a, a ballot and have it sent to you. I picked this up two weeks ago. Got one for Alexis. It's her first time voting. <laughs> Your vote matters. And I've said it before and I'll say it again as I, as I go to my seat. If your right to vote did not matter, why are people so hell-bent on taking it from you? Amen. God bless you, and may God smile upon you. He has adopted a practice of preachers as I go to my seat. And you know, when you say that once, Give them about five, ten more minutes. <laughs> Say amen for this presentation just one more time. Amen. We're going to, we're going to give now.
church more often, and we're going to put your abilities to use at the proper time. Amen. Y'all give him an amen. Young man, certified degree chef. Thank you. Thank you, Brother B. Um, Brother Bemis. Anybody want to tell the Lord thank you? COVID has changed some things. We normally on a day like today would have roses and passing them out and all that sort of thing. But on today, um, our youth director is going to have a reading for us. And then on the way out, uh, our youth director and, and co-director, Sister Hall, they will be stationed in the vestibule and every mother as you exit out of the building they're going to have a simple gift for you. Amen. Um, so let's receive Sister Latasha Washington now. Happy Mother's Day. Our theme today is, let's see, I had it up there. <laughs> Life lessons you learn from your mother. Originally, I was going to speak, but I got a call from Sister Hodges and she said, 
um, Chance wants to speak. And for me, whenever a, any of our youth want to get up and do something for the Lord, I'm going to step aside. And I told Sister Hodges, I said, well, we're going to take a chance on Chance. She said, he said he's in the seventh grade. He can do this. <laughs> so I was originally going to speak, but I said, we're going to take a chance on Chance. So Chance wants to have words of wisdom for mothers. Giving honor to God, recognizing pastor, the first, oh, okay, <laughs> giving honor to God, recognizing pastor and first lady, their family, ministers in the pulpit, to all of you, as well as our virtual worshipers. Good morning to all of you. <laughs> as you know, today is Mother's Day. And we would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here today, as well as the mothers who are watching virtually. Mother's Day is a holiday honoring motherhood. Mother's Day was created by Ann Jarvis in 1908 and became a official United States holiday in 1914. A mother is our very first teacher. She teaches us to do many things. A mother teaches us to believe in God and have faith in him. She cares for our needs and molds us into being a good human. A mother encourages us in our school studies, Bible studies, our talents, and teaches us many moral lessons. A mother is an important model in our life. She brings us to church, and, pr and her prayers and good wishes are always there with her children. A mother is our first and best friend. Her shoulder is always there in times when we feel low. She never judges us and shares her life experience with us, which makes us strong. She guides us through difficult times. So we shall always love and respect our mother and her thoughts. It, it is our duty to take care of, of our mothers as she did in our childhood. And for some of us to continue doing so now. Today, I will like to take the opportunity to thank my mother and be grateful to her and God for having me in her life. Enjoy the rest of the some. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Come on, y'all say amen to Brother Chance. They took a chance on Chance, and Chance delivered because they took a chance on Chance. Amen. And Brother Papa said, good job. Amen. Come on, y'all give us that song. Um, um, our choirs is, is not going to sing, our ensemble is not going to sing, um, I'm going to go straight to what I'm going to do so we can have you out early. Come on, Minister Rashawn. Good to see you, man. You can leave that suit with me when, you, when you're through today. That's my favorite color, midnight navy blue. Amen. Your mother is a friend who go with you to the end. No other one on earth like her you will find 
the time. Mama is a friend, and Mama is a friend, not some of the time, but all the time. Anybody happy about that? Mama is a friend, all the time. I don't have a scripture of reference today. For the sermon, I am going to preach topically, or I'm going to speak or minister topically. And brother preacher, that's what you do when you're not going to speak, preach or speak and pull out the text. What's in the text? You need to tell folk you're talking topically, so you don't read the scripture. And then don't say nothing about it. My daddy said, if you're going to read the scripture, preach what you read. Amen. And so I don't have a scripture, one particular scripture that I'm going to preach today. But I want to talk about a topic that ought to burn in our souls. Brother Chance, where did you go, Brother Chance? You behind me? Right. He had a topic that um, I want to further develop, and if you give me about 20 minutes, I think I can get it done. Amen. Amen. His topic was and is my topic, life's lessons one can learn from your mother. Brothers and sisters, I think I need to say very hurriedly that um, with the exception of Adam and the exception of Eve, a common thread that runs with every man, woman, boy, or girl, no matter where you live, east, west, coast, north, south, no matter where you live, if you were born after Adam and Eve, everybody has a mother. Let me say that again so I can get a good amen. amen. Everybody has a mother. And so to that end, I think it is a reasonable conclusion to draw from the fact that when God created mothers, brothers and sisters, what God did, he added a very special ingredient unlike none other. When God created mothers, he created a mother with the capacity to have what I want to term and dub and say and state into the saying of your ears, your earlobes, and to your craniums, uh, that he gave a mother what I call, un he gave a sacrificial love. I mean, mothers can love in ways that nobody else uh, can do. For the lyrical expression of the Reverend E. L. Harvell, who made this song sung by many across the country. He produced it and copyrighted it in 1936. And um, E.L. said that your mother is a friend uh, all the time. And to accentuate that sacrificial love that God gave her, that it didn't give to the male gender, so to speak, he says, no matter what the crime, that mother will always say that this child is mine. I wish I had a mama in here that didn't mind saying amen and say, I know 
what you're talking about. I know when my child got in trouble, it didn't matter. He was up for first degree murder, got convicted of it, serving 50 years. But no matter what the crime, that child is still mine. I wish I had a mama in here who wanted to say amen. Yeah, my son or my daughter got hooked up in some drugs and they're on jail in jail serving time and then they put a lot of folk on drugs. But that mama still rises up from her bed and declares no matter what the crime, that child is still mine. I'm just talking today, y'all. I'm just talking today. And you know, God knew what he was doing when he created mama. Yeah, God knew what he was doing. And you see, whenever you you look at mama, mama, yeah, y'all don't mind me um, um, shorting that thing down from mother to mama. Mama is the one who rises up early from sleep to soothe the cries that's coming from the crib. Mama is the one who's willing to sit beside the bed with a cool hand to bring soothing feeling to a feverish brow. Mama is the one who sews, she scrubs, she cooks. Mama is the one that irons and she patches up things. Mama is the one who mops. Mama is the one who sings that forever, um, never to be forgotten lullaby. Mama is the one when you scan and you skin up your knees. Mama is the one that put bandages on your knees. Mama is the one who comes to church and sits in pews and hears memories and having its memories. She's the one that lifts up holy hands and lifts up her head and tell God thank you for blessing my womb with a child. Mama is the one who asks as grandmother said, uh, when a child gets spoiled uh, by the grandmother, uh, mama is the one uh, that knows how to unspoil uh, that child. Uh, mama is the one uh, that will be a friend uh, all uh, of the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all still with me? And so, Brother Street, I did a little biblical research. I did a little biblical research about the various mothers. Y'all ready to hear what my research came up with? Come on. Y'all ready to hear my research? Before I give you my research, let me just break down this mother word, the mother. Um, If my spelling is correct, M-O-T-H-E-R. And I thought about doing an alliteration, you know, where every word starts with the same letter for mama. But I said, no, I'm going to just let it speak for itself. Can I give you the words, uh, the full form of mother and let it speak for itself? M, she's magnificent. O, she's uh, outstanding. T, no matter how tough life gets, she knows how to be tender. H, she's honorable. E, she's extraordinary. And thank God for the RO. After being magnificent, outstanding, tender, honorable, and extraordinary, mama knows how to be remarkable. Somebody ought to say amen for your mama. She may be dead and gone and resting in the grave, but you ought to tell God thank you. You had a mama. She might be in the sanctuary with a hat on, looking beautiful, but you ought to thank the Lord that she's still alive. She may not be at church. No matter where your mother is, you ought to thank God that God God gave you 
a magnificent, outstanding, a tender, a honorable, and extraordinary, and remarkable mama. Y'all still with me? I hadn't gotten to my research yet. I hadn't gotten to my life's lessons yet. Y'all still with me? Then they research. And Eve is the mother of all living. And then they research. And Sarah is the wife of Abraham. The mother of Isaac. And the grandmother of Jacob. Did the research and uh, Rebecca is, uh, yeah, Sarah is the wife of Abraham. Uh, Rebecca is the wife uh, of Isaac uh, and the grandmother of uh, Jacob. Did the research and uh, I found out uh, that Moses, uh, Miriam, uh, and Aaron's mother name uh, is Jacobi. Did the research and uh, Hannah is the mother of the prophet uh, Samuel. Uh, um, Bathsheba is the wife, was the wife of David uh, and the mother of Solomon. Uh, Elizabeth uh, was the mother of John the Baptist. Uh, and Mary was the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then the research and uh, Rachel is the mother of Joseph. Uh, Lois uh, is the mother of Eunice. Uh, and Eunice uh, is the mother of uh, Timothy, uh, the understudy of, of Paul. Uh, watch this, y'all. Uh, Sarah, yeah, is the mother who waited. Uh, Hagar is the mother who endured. Uh, Rebecca is the woman who believed. Uh, Leah and Rachel uh, is the mother who had to share a husband. Uh, yeah. Jacobed uh, is the mother who had a plan. Uh, Samson's uh, mother uh, is the one that believed in following uh, the rules. Uh, Naomi is the mother-in-law uh, who shared her faith uh, with her two daughters in laws yeah Hannah is the mother yeah who uh, remembered uh, her promise uh, Elizabeth uh, is the mother that believed in miracles uh, and Mary is the mother who the Bible says uh, that was blessed among all women thank God for a Bible mom and so Y'all, there are some life's lessons that I want to share with you on this Mother's Day. And I told y'all I would hold y'all alone, but I wouldn't hold you alone. Uh, first lesson, but chance, that I want to share with them, I want to further develop with you and Sister Washington and Sister Hall came up with the first lesson I want to share good mamas tell their children never forget your roots uh, you see you can keep mama happy if you just don't forget where you came from uh, um, too many folk, after God allows you to rub a couple of George Washingtons together, when at first you only could rub some pennies and quarters, we tend to forget where we come from. Um, Brother Damper, I see some folk a little cold. They shivering up. I, I don't want them to get too cold on. I want them to stay hot. <laughs> Turn that air down. Uh, but 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 you, you don't want to forget where you came from. You see, you see, you see. You you don't want to walk after God has blessed you. You don't want to walk with your head lifted up, thinking that you all better than everybody else. 
You don't want to walk with your head lifted up thinking nobody can touch you. You know why you don't want to do that? Because the same God that lifted you is the same God that can bring you down. You see, I've discovered uh, if you want to be somebody, go about it being uh, somebody the Bible way. If you want to be exalted, uh, just humble yourself. And if you want to be humbled, uh, just mess around and exalt yourself. God will bring you down. Uh, he knows how to lift you up. And he knows how to bring you down. You see, the roots on the tree, uh, it's good for nourishment. And then it's good uh, for stability. The roots would deep, go deep down and in search uh, for water and nitrogen and any, any other nutrients uh, that have caused the tree to be a healthy tree. That's when uh, the tree stay connected uh, to the root. But if you disconnect the tree from the root, you'll kill the root. And you'll kill the tree. And I want to tell some child in here, no matter where you go, what education you get, don't let your education become your education. Stay connected to your roots. Are y'all with me? But then the second life lesson, Brother Chance, I want to knock down and drop. If you want to keep mama happy, with a big old smile on her face. This is how you do it. Remember to say please and thank you. Yes, sir. Let me push the pause button here. Um, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I hear. Um, I hear folk now, young folk, give me this. That's mine. You know, I don't hear him say too often, please, may I have this? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Please, will you give me this? <laughs> and then after you do give them something, I don't hear too many of them saying, thank you for giving it to me. You know, my mama, and I know she's watching this, so I'm going to say it and she knows it's going to be the truth. My mama never got past the 11th grade. That's not new to y'all. I told y'all that already. She never got past the 11th grade. She didn't know anything about Sigmund Freud. She doesn't know anything about Sir Isaac Newton. She don't know anything about E equal MC square. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. She doesn't know anything about the pie charts and the Crafts, uh, but what my mama doesn't know, uh, my mama taught her children to say please uh, when you want something, uh, and she taught us to say thank you when you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Amen. Um, there's a story, and let me just let me drop drop the story off. There's a story about a young boy. He was given an orange by man. And um, the boy's mother asked him, um, he, she said, now, the man has been so nice to you. What are you going to say? The little boy thought a little while, started scratching his head, and he picked up the orange, and he gave it back to the man and said, now, peel it. Y'all just missed that. The man gave him an orange. His mama said, now what you going to say because the man gave you an orange? The little brasco was so ungrateful. He said, now peel it. But young people, let me tell you something. You ought to remember what your mama taught you. You ought to remember how she said, say please. You ought to remember how to say thank you. Please get you further down the road than any Benjamin Franklin. Thank you will get you further down the road than any possession you can ever have. Learn how to be great for what God has given you. Too many folk are too ungrateful for that which the Lord 
has done. Do you not know everything you know? It wasn't your attendance in class. It wasn't your note taken. It wasn't the notes you put on your iPad nowadays or even your cell phone. May I give you why you know what you know? God taught you. Do you not know that everything you have in your possession, it ain't because you so rightfully deserve it? Because if the truth be really told, uh, all of us deserve to be dead, sleeping in our grave. Uh, and all of us have come short of the glory and the grace of God. But thank God he looks over us and he gives us some mercy. Do you not know uh, wherever you've been in life, uh, it doesn't matter if you've just been in Omaha or it's just been in Iowa or uh, Denver or wherever you've been, it wasn't the airplane, the Boeing 737 or the 747 that took you there. Man, I tell you who brought you wherever you are, it is the Lord who brought you where you are and wherever you got to go. It's not your accounting degree that's going to get you there. It's not your curriculum and instruction master degree that's going to get you there. It's not counseling the psychology that's going to get you there. It's not your engineering uh, degree that's going to make you there. Yeah, it's good to get those things. Yeah, you need those things. But remember the things your mama taught you that's going to carry you in this life. Hallelujah. Boy, you done made me forget what I was about to say. <laughs> I ain't going there today. I'm trying not to go there. The third thing I think, I three, three, I did two. Third one, that you got to remember to make mama happy. Can y'all give me 10 more minutes? Come on, preacher. Come on. Have your way. Have your way, oh God. You sure about that, man? Have your way, oh God. You sure about that? Yes, yes, Lord. The third thing I want to drop off to you that I think mama tries to teach is that she wants you to listen to some sound advice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know the beautiful thing about good mamas and great daddies, good mamas, good daddies, they are not jealous and they don't get bent out of shape if another mama or another daddy can give their child some good advice. Um, I remember, I don't have time to say that again, Sister Pal, but let me say this. I remember I was a young boy. Uh, Mr. Guillory is dead and in the grave. Who is Mr. Guillory? Let me tell you who he is. He was the principal of the elementary school that I attended on Fenson Rider Road in Lake Charles, Louisiana, called Riverside. Miss Goings, who is Miss Goings? She was my fourth grade teacher at Riverside. And I remember, that's why, um, um, I guess maybe I need to confess this right now. Um, I, don't get, I don't get too bent out of shape about my kids in the young days, prior to seventh grade, having some excited issues. What are excited issues? Amen. Boy, y'all, y'all like this. E up button. What are excited issues? These days in our school, excited issue is when they talk a little bit too much in school. It's when they pester other folk who are still trying to take a test, but they whiz through the test so fast, they got bored, and so they had to bother somebody else. I don't get upset with that about my kids. You know why? I know where it came from. And it didn't come from their mama. 
the other party that's in the equation got to be their daddy. So I, 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 I don't get too upset with that because I know that there's going to be a settling down time. And that settling down time for them would be about to settle for their grade. They're going to start living and learning to act with some sense. Again, that didn't come from their mama. Say amen, baby. That didn't come from their mama, y'all. That came from me. And so I never forget Miss Going. She gave us a test. And I, 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 I went through it so quick with a class. And I was fidgety and I started bothering other folk. And for preacher, she pulled me up in front of the class. That was back in those days when teachers could handle the class. Come on, preacher. Let me see if I can give you some measurements. She, she, had, a, she had a ruler. Back in them days, we called it a paddle. It was about that thick. That was about almost two inches thick, inch and a half, and about the length, about that long. So she pulled me in front of the class, and um, she brought me there, and she put it to me. Then she sent me, you know, keep in mind, I'm talking about, you know, advice, listen to good advice. And my mama didn't mind other adults giving me good advice. Then she sent me to the principal's office. Mr. Guillory, and I'm sure Ms. Goins is, is probably in that grade. Uh, Ms. Guillory talked, he knew my daddy. He said, I ain't going to call your daddy right now, but I'm going to give you something that I know they don't mind me doing. He pulled off his belt, and he whipped me in the principal's office. Again, that's when you could whip other kids' folk, and you didn't go to jail. Matter of fact, you whip your own child now, they try to send you to jail. Well, I want y'all to know, I've told y'all that before, my kids got whippings at my house. And if they still living under my roof, Terry's still living under my roof. He's, how old are you, boy, 23? He's 23, gonna soon be 24. If he ever step out, his mama ain't got to handle him, I'm gonna handle him. That's because he's still living in my house. And so if I happen to go to jail, uh, here's what I need y'all to do. Get some bail money together. Come get me out of jail and then let me handle my children. That's after y'all give them some good advice. He, he put it to me. Then he said, I'm going to take you to your house. And he brought me to the house, told my mama what happened. My mama told him, thank you. Then she whipped me. Then when my daddy got home. Yeah. You came up like I did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, now, nah, I done got it three times. I don't need to get it again. But my daddy didn't mind other folk giving me good advice. And Miss Gowen said, you got to learn how to have good behavior. Mr. Guillory said, you got to learn how to have good behavior. My mama said, you got to learn how, how, how to have good behavior. And then Brother French, when my daddy got home, and he worked in Jennings at that time, 30 miles uh, east of Lake Charles, Louisiana, when he got home in that blue 1967 La Sabre Buick car, and I heard it pull up. I started shivering because I knew what Miss Goins gave me, what Mr. Roy, William Roy gave me, what my mama gave me. My daddy was going to do far worse than that. All I'm trying to tell you, it takes a village even today to raise your children. So my mama said, let me, I, I want you to listen to good advice. Here, let me throw out some good advice. How about look both ways before you cross the street? How about nowadays when you get in the car, and um, I'm guilty of this, um, family, y'all don't say nothing, and it won't be nothing. 
I'm guilty of this. How about buckle up your seatbelt? Or how about children, when you get in the chair and you start leaning back on two legs, how about when mama says, keep all four legs down? All she's trying to do is just trying to tell you to avoid danger. And see, if you listen, if you listen to your mama, you can, you can avoid a whole lot of things that otherwise would get you tripped up. That's three, right? Let me give you a fourth one. How about your mama will remain happy if you learn how to listen to your coach and do what your teacher tells you to do. All she's trying to tell you, young people, or if you're of an age and you never got it yet, all she was trying to tell you is learn how to submit to authority. Now, I'm going to tell y'all why I didn't get too many amens on that. Y'all ready? Because everybody want to be in authority. And, 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 and we have trouble who are in authority. We have trouble knowing where our authority lines stop and then where we ought to become a follower. Huh? Uh, you see, I'm, I'm about to say something. I hope I don't lose the men. I hope I don't lose the men on this. I'm about to say something. You see, every man, God made us to live in authority. Every man. Every man ought to say amen. amen. <laughs> Come on, brother, say, I live in authority. I didn't hear y'all. Come on, brother. Say, I live in authority. I didn't hear y'all. Come on. Say, I. Let's go one word by word. I live in authority. Now, here's the problem. We live in authority, so we don't like to submit too often to the authority of somebody else. Come on, brothers, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. If you don't think I'm telling, I'm, I done got off my topic, brother. If you don't think I'm telling the truth, watch this. And ladies, I think y'all will agree with me. I'm talking, I'm speaking, I'm not, I'm talking. Watch this, watch this. Ladies, don't raise your hands on this. But have you ever asked your husband to go, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that you, your marriage ain't all that. Um, I'm, 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 I'm just saying what I'm saying. Have you ever asked your husband to go to counseling? Don't raise your hand. Don't say nothing. Have you ever got the response, I don't need no counseling. We don't need no counseling. Don't say nothing. Have you ever asked him again and you got the same response? I'm going to tell you why. We, come on, y'all say amen, brothers. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on, Tyler, you ain't got there yet, but you're going to get there. We, men, don't like to go tell our business to another man. I just told y'all something that's earth-shattering women. Y'all order, y'all write that down. and That's why, that's why he been, now I ain't saying all, some of them will go, you know, but, but, but by and large, most of us won't go because we are in authority and we ain't going to submit to somebody else's. Now, I ain't going to say nothing about that more than about that. that uh, that's another lesson. Um, that, 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 what I would but all mama is trying to say, listen to your teacher. Listen to those who have authority over you. And child, children, if you can listen to those who have authority over you, you'll be better off than trying to show them some thing in the rear that you're walking with pants halfway down on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Let me try to get out of here so we can get out before 11 so you can take mama to dinner and all that stuff. Last, last, is that four or five? That's four, five. I had seven of them, but I'm going to just give you five. Five. Why y'all laughing? <laughs> five. Finally, brethren, five. The last piece I want to say to you. Mama will be happy if you're careful of choosing your friend. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians, the only verse I'm going to refer to today, and y'all know I don't normally preach it, I'll talk like that first, but I'm talking how? Topically. So I'm talking about my topic. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Paraphrase says, bad company corrupts yes, sir. Yes, sir. good character. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, mama ain't trying to say that you're better than anybody. Mama simply trying to say, that if you hang around good company, it'll help you. Because what you know that I know, that everybody knows by now, birds of a feather. Come on, y'all. My son Ray Daniel doing this. He, he know they birds of a feather tend to what? Flock together. Let me say, let me say some terms that um, the old preacher had uh, almost perfected. Assimilation, A and A. Assimilation brings about, yeah, who said that? My wife? Who said that? My wife, no. Assimilation brings about association. Here's what my mama was trying to tell me when she would she would, now, she wouldn't use all them flower words. she just be, be careful of who you hang around with. And I understood what that meant. Here's what my mama, I, how I translated that. Don't hit that key, man. I'm trying not to go there. Here's what my mama translated that. My mama said, her translation that I got from what she said was, boy, you ain't all, all that bag of chips. You ain't better than nobody else. But if you want to stay out of trouble, hang with folk that don't get in trouble. Um, I don't know why I'm about to say this on live stream. Thank God they cannot arrest me for crimes that's over the 20 and 30 years. But I'm going to confess this. Some of y'all, y'all going to remember, that was a store, a merchant called T-G-N-Y. Anybody remember that? Y'all remember that? Okay. And the manager was a little short guy, about, about that tall, big old afro. And we used to go to T-G-N-Y, myself and my brothers and other friends, and there was another store that's just about obsolete with brick and mortar called Sears. Y'all remember Sears? S-E-A-R-S. -S. And Sister French, we would go in there. No, Mama, don't, don't get upset with me, but I'm just, I'm just trying to get my point right. We would go in there. Bad company corruption. We, we, we would go in there, and we had what was called an NFL football league. You know, you know you have the little the stadium that run by the electricity, and you got the men that, that it, it moves on the, on the field. Y'all remember that? Yes. And so we had, a, a, we had, a, yeah, we had, a, we had our own NFL teams on, on, on 1901 Knapp Street. And so... Um, and when, when we needed replacement players, 
Um, there was not a draft in those days for us. Um, we would visit TGNY and Sears. Huh, I don't know why I'm saying this. Yeah. And we would swap out. We would swap out. Now, y'all know I, I'm saying some stuff I did. Everything I've ever been through got me where I'm at today. And we would swap out football players. Well, one day, went to TGNY. And um, Greg Carter, they lived behind us. My mama had told me, you need to be careful with that little boy. And we went to TGNY. And we went to swap out a football team. Y'all remember that manager I told y'all about? He was short. He go Afro style. I wish I could remember his name. He's got to probably be dead now, too. He caught us doing some stuff yes, sir. Yes, sir. that my mama told us not to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But watch what he did, y'all. He didn't call the police. He brought us back in his managerial office. And he started telling us all the stuff that could happen to us. And by the time he got through talking about what could happen to us, uh, I was so scared, I took out the team out of my pocket and said, Sir, I don't need this no more. This is yours. <laughs> all I'm trying to say if you hang out with the wrong folk, you can end up doing the wrong things. But learn how to listen to mama when mama says, bad company corrupts good children. And so, got to find the next point. My mama had all kind of rules. Um, and like my mama, Jesus has all kinds of rules. Jesus says, if you want to go to heaven, you got to come through me. Jesus says, you got to accept me as your savior while the blood is running warm in your veins. Jesus says, by way of Paul, if you confess with your talking mouth and believe with your believing heart, that my daddy God uh, did, uh, that Jesus, me, did die on the cross. And my daddy God did get me out of the grave uh, three days later. Jesus says, not that you might have salvation, uh, but Jesus says, uh, you shall uh, be saved. Anybody want to follow Jesus' rules? Anybody up in here can raise your hand. I, I'm asking you to raise your hand now. Anybody up in here can raise your hands and say, thank God I followed the rules uh, of my mama. Anybody up in here can say, yeah, sometimes I didn't want to follow them, but I found out I was better off if I followed the rules of my mama. And I want to tell you something today. You may not be following the rules of the Savior, but baby, you'll be better off if you follow the rules of the Savior. It's never too late. And I'm closing, y'all. I'm, I done found my exit point. You see, when you're on the highway driving to Lincoln, there's a whole, before you get to Lincoln, there's a whole lot of exits you can take. I know that because when my son was a freshman, I put my Cadillac on the road every weekend to bring him, go pick him up. I got tired of that, y'all, so I bought them a car and let them. But when I was doing that, I found, I noticed before I got to Lincoln, there were a whole bunch of exits that I could take. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I also noticed if you took an exit, you never got to Lincoln. And sinner, unsaved person, in this life in which we live in, we're designed by God to go to heaven. You'll get there if you stay on the right path. 
But there are so many exits that if you take an exit, it's going to be the wrong exit. It's never too late to have your sins washed away. It's never too late to have your soul redeemed. It's never too late not to be caught up on the hook of Satan. It's never too late to experience what I call transformation. It's never too late to take your burdens and let God make them to be a blessing. It's never too late uh, to take your guilt uh, and let God bring it to his uh, glory. It's never too late uh, to take sorrow uh, and replace it with some joy. And on this Mother's Day, I think your mama would be tremendously, ecstatically, exuberantly, excitedly, Filled with unending joy. If she could say, on Mother's Day, my child accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. As we stand all over the building. It's never too late. Jesus hung on the cross. He hung on the cross. And he did not hang to save himself. He was saved already. He never was lost. He came here right and perfect. But he did hang for that person who had never accepted him. All of us. He did hang such that our lives could be made the richer and the better. So if you're here today, I want to invite you to do something that will make your mama happy. If you know Jesus is not your personal savior, if you know you are out of the ark of safety, I didn't say out of church, because you can be out of church and not be saved. You can be in church and not be saved. So if you're out of the ark of safety, don't possess salvation. I'm inviting you to come as the lyrical expression of the song that's being sung now. I'm inviting you to surrender all to him. All to him you freely give. And I will tell you what you'll see. You will see God turn it around for you. Mama gave us some lessons we can learn. And the last lesson that every mother I believe who is saved wants to teach her child you got to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. You can't get to heaven on mama's salvation. If your mother is saved, that doesn't make you God's grandchild. You got to get to heaven on your own salvation. And right now, Jesus is robed with his salvation garments. But one day he's going to take off his salvation garments. And he's going to put on garments that will allow him to serve as your judge. Brother, sister, I'd rather meet Jesus while he has on his salvation garments. He's given grace and mercy rather than meeting him when he's given out his wrath. And so I'm going to ask all of you that saved today, be praying. Start praying right now for a lost person that you know has not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. Whether they're in the building or out of the building, they don't have to be in this building to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. You can pray a prayer and 
God's Holy Spirit will work on convincing, convincing, and converting them. And they don't have to be in church to get saved. God can save them wherever they are. And so I'm going to ask just, just words for a word to God. If you have a child or nephew, niece, someone close association to you that has not made that decision to accept the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, I'm going to pray and ask that you would, I'm going to ask that you would pray and ask God to go after them this very moment. If you're in the building and you want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, you can come. We will explain to you the simple process of being saved. You don't have to foam at the mouth. You don't have to run around, tap everybody's carpet. You don't have to jump over pew. You don't have to see nothing, hear nothing. But you do have to accept something. What do you have to accept? You have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And then to you who are saved, but you need church membership. I am not a perfect pastor, but I will assure you this. I would love to be your pastor. And every member of Mount Nebo would love to be your fellow church member. So if you're saved and looking for a church, you don't have a church. This is for you. If I was you today, I wouldn't walk out of this building not having a church on. You're not guaranteed to make it home. You're not guaranteed to make it back next week. So I would not take that chance leaving out without a church home. And then the day of you here, you got salvation, you got church membership, maybe you just want someone to pray with you. If you will come, our deacons and a few of our preachers are here. We will pray with you. We will put your name before God. Whatever your prayer need, prayer request is. We believe the God we serve can and will answer prayer. Anybody know God will answer prayer? Come on, anybody know God will answer prayer? You may have to cry a little bit, but God will answer prayer. He specializes. He specializes. Heads about God, our Father. And we thank you afresh. This day, many years ago, one being Anna Jarvis petitioned her city for celebration. You moved on some hearts, and now we're here today celebrating what Anna Jarvis requested. And Lord, we pray and we thank you for blessing the womb of every mother. And then, Lord, we are cognizant of the fact that there are some ladies who did not produce a child via womb but yet they serve in the role of mother. And we pray that you will continue to give every mother the strength and the resource to be just that to their children, to be a sure and honest mother. Give them the ability to lead as your word says they ought to lead. We pray now for the sinner who has heard your word but yet has not responded. We pray the next time they hear your word that a response will be on their heart. Lord, it is your will that no man would be perish, that would perish. And Lord, we don't perish because you want us to perish. We perish because we never make the decision to make you our Lord. Thank you for the death of your son, Jesus. It is by him we get to you. No other way. He's the door. He's standing at the door. He's going to be the one to close the door. But until that time, 
We pray for the salvation of souls. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And the believer said, Amen. Give God a hand to pray. Just want to do a couple of things before we get out. Uh, the ushers are getting those out who needs to get out first. Um, thank, let me tell you, thank you all for coming to church. Oh, Mount Nebo, I hope y'all can go ahead and cut, cut the last name off. If y'all have not, go ahead and cut it off. Uh, Mount Nebo, you are a great church. The pandemic, if we didn't know it prior to, the pandemic revealed how great of a church Mount Nebo is. We are coming back for worship. Not come, well, we're still coming, but by the Lord, we have came back to worship. That's that realm. But we trust God and we believe God enough to come and to worship him. Amen. Now, we want to be um, um, vigilant and we want to be um, good thinkers when we're in worship. When we're in worship, we wear our what? Say it aloud again. We wear our what? Mask. Now, I'm not sure how long that's going to continue. You know by now from watching the news that this variant is causing numbers to rise. But here's what we know. Here's what we know. And I picked that up early on. God dropped it in my spirit early on. Here's what we know. We know how to live among this variant. Amen. We've learned how to live among all kind of other stuff. We now know how to live among this variant. And one of our great defenses is this mask and our vaccinations. Um, you got the two shots for vaccinations. You got the first booster. You got the second booster. And I think they may be coming out with a third booster and a fourth booster. But just do what you need to do to stay healthy. Amen. Now, all the mothers that's in the room, y'all stand up. Whether you're a mother by biological process or you are a mother via giving direction to a child. All the mothers. Happy Mother's Day to you. Come on, brothers. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day, dear mother. Happy Mother's Day. One more time and then we're going to let them go. We're going to let them go. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you. sit down. I'm going to ask the ushers, um, where is the table in the vestry room? Is it on my left or my right? Is it on my left? Okay. I'm going to, um, Brother Sammy, if you will, stay where you at, Brother Sammy. Um, Brother Parks, if you will, come, come this way, Brother Parks, real quick. He moves real fast. Y'all want to see him. What, see how fast he's moving, y'all? He moved real fast. I wish I moved that fast when I get to be his age and he's in his shape. Stand right here for me, Brother Parks. Now, um, um, Brother Ellis, can I get you to participate? No, no, Brother Clancy was a usher. Can I get you to participate? If you'll stand right at the corner, at the corner, yes. Now, here's what I want. Just the mothers. We're going to start in the choir stand. Mothers in the choir of law want you to come out this way. Pass by Brother Parks. Go to Brother Clancy. Brother Clancy will put his hand out like that. Then y'all gonna go straight down that aisle. You're gonna make a right when you get out and pick up your gift. And then you'll be able to go wherever you're gonna go. Amen. Amen. Now, let the choir. But Sammy, I want you to start from the back pew. Just the mothers. 
direct them up to the to the front to Brother Parks, where Parks will direct them to Brother Clancy, Deacon Clancy, Deacon Clancy will direct them to Brother Damper, and then Brother Damper will direct them to pick up their gift and they'll be gone. Mothers, if y'all will be participatory with us today, if you're not a mother, I'm gonna ask you to remain seated. If you're not a mother, I'm gonna ask you to remain seated. Come on, mothers, I need y'all to come this way. Amen. Y'all give me some marching music, man. Yeah, into my life. What a wonderful change. Thank you, mothers, for being so obedient. Has come over me. 